Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 20th of January, 2017, and today's a Q&A session, so let's dive right in. Our first question is from Anna Corey, and she says, Hi, Curtis. A month back, I finished a personal project. I edited it in Final Cut Pro 10 and did the sound mix with Logic Pro 10 because at the time I didn't have Audition. Anyway, I did my mix with the basic knowledge I have on mixing sound, but I'm not very happy with how it sounds on low-quality systems, laptop speakers, iPhone, etc., it lacks the top and bottom end. I would like to ask if you could help me with ideas on how to fine tune this mix using Adobe Audition so it sounds good, not just in with my nice studio headphones or studio speakers, but everywhere. Here's a link to the video. It's eight minutes long. Thank you for all your help, Anna. Well, uh, let's go and show you. Here is the video. I'll put a link for this in the uh, notes down below the session here today. And the name of the film is The World is a Luna Park. Um, this happens to be the version with English subtitles. I believe it's all recorded in Italian. Um, and I, I'm not really going to play it back here, but um, if you'd like to go watch it, the main thing I observed, so the film is mainly uh, an interview with this with the main subject, main talent, who is a teacher. And um, and then on with, with that, you have some music and then a lot of you know additional footage that goes is interspersed between the interview. And uh, it's really done nicely, by the way. I really liked it. Thank you, Anna, that you did a nice job on that. Um, and the main thing I would say are one main thing um, is not so much a mixing issue, I don't think. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how you think about it, mixing. <laughs> um, but this was recorded. You can see right here, there is a little lavalier microphone that he's wearing. And it's pretty high up on his chest. Um, and I think that's actually probably the biggest challenge here. I think overall, again, Everything is good in terms of the balance. I think his voice is generally, you know, you can hear it, you can understand what he's saying. That's all good. So in terms of mixing and, and setting the levels between the music and that, um, that's all pretty good. The The main thing I noticed about that particular lavalier microphone, though, is that it's very mid-range focused. Just like you said in your question here, you're not happy with how it sounds. On low-quality systems, it, tends, it appears to lack the top and the bottom end, and I agree entirely. That lavalier microphone is very mid-range focused. There's not a lot of low end and there's not a lot of high end. Um, and so um, ideally, for future productions, I would probably suggest you look at using a boom mic instead. Since it was a seated interview, a boom mic is actually very easy in those scenarios and it works very nicely in most cases. Um, and that will generally get a fuller sound from the start. Um, However, you're trying to fix what you have, and I totally understand that. So let me just show you something really quickly, what I would do in Audition. I would come into just the dialogue track, so what you have uh, from the interview, and I would come into Effects, Amplitude, and, uh, sorry, no, Filter and EQ, Parametric Equalizer, and I would equalize um, that soundtrack a little bit. So if you come to the drop down here, what I would probably do is start with this Vocal Enhancer preset. And this is doing a few things. You can see it's boosting the low frequencies. Again, Human Voice. For men, kind of uh, starts somewhere around the 80 hertz range for most men. And so if you can boost a little bit of that, which this preset does, you can see here at 110 hertz, it boosts by six decibels. So that's one thing you can do. It also has this cut right here. It's a three decibel cut at 291 hertz. Right around 300 hertz, there's sort of this uh, frequency, which often for voice tends to have sort of a... Um, Kind of a boomy sound to it. It's not. It, it, I don't think it'd be a problem with this particular recording necessarily. Maybe it would. I'm not sure. Um, but they often, often a cut there can help things a little bit. But the most important thing for you, actually, and there's well before I get to that, um, then there's this high frequency boost. This is a really extreme boost. I wouldn't do that much. I'd pull that down. It was at 13 over 13 decibels. <laughs> I think you can pull that down and dial it into taste. So as it's playing. Kind of change that a little. You can also pull it down in frequency, so you can pull it a little bit farther down this way if you feel like you need more energy there as well. So remember, in this case with an equalizer like this, the secret is your ears. You're using your ears to figure out what sounds best. And what often helps if you need, um, I guess, what often helps is if you can have a reference track. If you have a recording of a, a male dialogue from some other source, I would listen to that first and then switch over to this 
and um, try to try to match that sound a little bit. It, may, it won't match perfectly in most cases, especially if it's a different man's voice. Um, but that could help kind of just give you a reference point. And then probably the most important thing is I would come in here and turn on another one of these points here. I would move this up to around 1000 hertz. And I would do a cut and go a little bit extreme at first, maybe go minus nine decibels. You're not gonna leave it there, but this is just to kind of figure out if this will help. And then you can sweep back and forth a little bit. Again, that lavalier microphone that he's wearing sounds very mid-range focused to me. And a lot of times I find that you have to do a cut around a thousand hertz to pull some of that down. Now, once you find a frequency that's starting to sound a little bit better, then uh, kind of pull back a little bit on the cut that you're doing here. Maybe go back up to three decibels and see if that helps. So those are some of the things that I would do as far as really kind of helping that uh, that dialogue to shine a little bit more, to sound a little richer, to also have some more top end. And um, once you get that sounding good on your, you know, your, your quality um, speakers or headphones or, or whatever you're using for monitoring, um, then also go and, you know, export it and then go play it on a mobile phone. It's always going to sound a little tinnier on a mobile phone unless you're using really nice headphones with it. That's just the nature of laptop speakers. It's the nature of phone speakers. It's the nature of the earbuds that usually come with headphone or would come with phones. So that's pretty natural. Um, but but I definitely understand what you're asking here, and it can sound better. And hopefully that will help it sound a little bit better there. All right. Thanks for that question, Anna, and congratulations on your film. It looks really great. All right. Next question is from Julian. Uh, hey Curtis, what microphone would you recommend for reporter style interviewing at conferences? I'll be carrying my Zoom H5 in my back pocket, so wired and phantom power shouldn't be a problem. Would it be possible to use a shotgun mic as a handheld reporter mic? Thanks, Julian. Well, uh, first answer to your question, yes, you could use a shotgun mic, and I have seen people do that. Um, that would not be my first choice. Let me, and, and, and the main reason why is that condenser mo microphones like shotgun microphones um, often experience a little bit more handling noise unless they're in a shock mount. And that is plain and simply because their capsules are a lot more sensitive <laughs> than a dynamic mic, certainly. Um, so that would not be my first choice. I've seen some people do it, and they've done it to good effect. Um, it, it's come out nicely. What you need to know, though, is you have to be very steady with your hand if you're going to do that. Um, and you need to avoid the, you know, like the cable from shaking underneath it because that will transfer vibrations up to the capsule and the microphone. And again, condenser... Capsules are very, very sensitive, and they're very likely to pick that kind of stuff up. My recommendation in lieu of that would instead be to come and look at something like the Sennheiser MD46. Now, my friend uh, Scott Vanderbilt came out and shot a, a bunch of pieces that we did last year at NAB, um, interviews on a conference floor, and this was the microphone that uh, that we used. It's his, I believe, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this was the one that we used. Uh, Sennheiser actually has a series of several different um, interview microphones like this, and it's made for handheld use, has a longer handle, has cardioid pickup pattern. It is a dynamic microphone, so it does need a little bit more gain, but the Zoom H5 should be able to handle it. The nice thing about this is that it will also, um, my sense is that, um, whereas the shotgun mic will have a very narrow pickup pattern, it is going to be very sensitive. So it's going to be very sensitive to the direction that you're pointing it and sound that's even far away in the direction that you're pointing that mic, it, it will potentially pick up. So the nice thing about a dynamic mic is it doesn't really pick up much of anything. Once you get about a meter away, it's not picking up a lot of that. Um, this also has a cardioid pickup pattern. So it is, you know, uh, here's the spec sheet here. So it does have a, uh, you know, a, a directional pickup pattern as well. And in terms of street price, it does run right around $200 US. So well, I've, I've had a really good experience with that mic. I hope that um, is helpful to you. And I hope that the uh, kind of the ex explanation about why a shotgun mic may not be the perfect choice or the best choice uh, also makes sense as well. However, if you don't have a budget to, to spend something like this and you do have a shotgun mic, give it a go. I would definitely practice first <laughs> to make sure that you got your technique down and you've got that all smoothed out and working for you. Thanks, Julian. And best wishes on recording there. Uh, next up, Richard. Hi, Curtis. Thanks for all your work in putting together, putting these sessions. Uh, when processing an audio file, I get to the stage of removing lip smacks and other noises between words. Um, 
have been reducing the level in these areas by 10 dB as detailed in your course. I've been trying an alternative approach recently for sounds I want to remove totally. I've been copying an area of quiet and pasting it over the sound. To do this, I'm having to delete the sound I want to, re to be removed and then paste in a copied part that is exactly the same length. This works, but I think there must be a better way of, ch of achieving the same result in a more efficient way. It would be nice to copy an area and paste it over an area without affecting the track length. Can you see any problems with this and can you recommend a better way of doing it? Um, Richard, that's a good question. And um, I do have an updated way from my course that works better. The, the way I did it in my course is very time consuming and it's not, it works. Um, but I think I have found a better way to do that. Here we have a lip smack. It's probably hard for you to see, but <laughs> the, and this is a relatively minor one. So a lot of times they, they look like a little spike and they can be a, quite a bit louder than this one. This one's not terribly loud. This is a, just a file I happen to have on hand. So in Adobe Audition, what I would do is I would drag this bar up here to get you to the spectral view. Interestingly, when we come to the spectral view, you can definitely see the lip smack right there. We just want to highlight that area. Come up to Effects and choose Auto Heal Selection or Command U. Process this for a second. Now it is gone. And not only is it gone, but it has done something interesting. Instead of creating silence, it's actually taken some of the surrounding sound and recreated this area here. That's the quickest way to do it. And in my opinion, it's the most transparent way to do it. It does not change the length of the file. Um, and you can work through a file pretty quickly that way. So hopefully that makes sense and that uh, speeds up your workflow and makes this process of removing those lip smacks and mouth noises a little bit easier. So hopefully that helps, Richard. Thanks for that question. Okay, next up we have a question from Kevin Edwards. Hi, Curtis. I wonder if you'd be happy to give your view as to which of the current crop of handheld recorders with inbuilt microphones would you choose to gather Foley and environmental sound samples? The main point for me is size and sound quality. Zoom, Sony, Tascam, Marantz, or possibly something completely different. As for many these days of internet publishing, getting hands-on before buying is something sometimes difficult at best regards, Kevin. Totally understand, Kevin. I can tell you from my own experience, I have not used any of the Sony recorders or the Marantz recorders. I've heard very good things about Marantz, and I don't know if they're still making new models. I, I assume they are. Um, I haven't kept up on those. I've never used one. Um, I've heard great things about the Sony recorders as well, but again, I have not used those personally. I would say, um, what I can tell you with my own experience is that I think that the Zoom H5 is good. I've had a good experience with that. Um, I think that the Zoom H6 is also good. Um, I know you're looking for, you know, size probably, you'd like to keep it smaller, I assume. Um, I think the H5 is a from top to bottom, I think it's the same, but I think it's a little narrower. Um, so it's not a huge difference in size, but those two I've used. I, I actually think that for outdoor use, the H5 is uh, in some ways a better option just because the screen, while it's not as high quality, the screen's a lot easier to read outdoors. On the H6, that's kind of one of the big downsides of the H6 from my point of view is that that screen, it's beautiful, it's color, <laughs> it looks really nice but it's super hard to read outdoors in the sunlight, whereas the H5 um, does a really nice job. In terms of the preamps and the quality of the sound that you'll get, the H5, from my experience, seems to be very much on par with the H6. Um, build quality seems pretty solid. Um, I do like the, the gain knobs on the, or gain trims, potentiometers, whatever they're called on the Zoom H5, um, are pretty nice. Um, they're a lot better than on the H on the H4n or the H4n Pro. I would avoid the H4n um, if I were you, um, just because I don't like this personal opinion. So people can disagree with me, and that's fine. Everyone has their own opinion on this. I don't like the way the ergonomics of the H4n or the H4n Pro. The um, the input control is a rocker switch, and that's not great, <laughs> especially while you're rolling sound. So um, those would be my recommendations to look at the H5 or the H6. Probably my first choice would be the H5. Um, on the Tascam side, there is the DR100 Mark III, which I have not tested yet. I, I actually previously owned the DR100 Mark II. It was pretty good, um, but it was a little bit funky. It didn't have it didn't have the XY pattern for the stereo mics. They were actually just 
sitting next to each other like this. So I think, you know, if you're trying to do that traditional XY uh, stereotype of recording, I think the H5 is probably a better choice. So um, although the preamps in the DR100 Mark III are supposed to be very, very good, uh, I would hold on that until we get a little bit more information on it. I haven't seen a lot of reviews yet, and I haven't had the time to review it myself yet. So I guess if we had to boil it all down, Zoom H5 would be my first choice. All right, uh, that is all the questions for this week. I'd like to thank everyone uh, for, sub you know, everyone that submitted questions for doing that. Um, I hope everyone's having a great experience learning new things. Um, and if you have any questions, go ahead and hit me up via email, and we will talk to you again next week. Take care, everyone.